Alexa, set timer for 17 minutes. 17 minutes, starting now. Hi, I'm gonna see how disciplined I can be with keeping this video short. <laughs> I tend to make long videos. And I don't like editing long videos and I don't like watching long videos. So I like to keep my videos short, not just for my sake, but also for yours. You're welcome. All right, so we're gonna see how disciplined we can be with this video. Is that Red Noodle talking? Probably. I finally finished this Beck Depression Inventory Skill. Is that the same thing as an inventory? Skill and inventory? I'm not sure how to help me with that. This is the questions that my, these are the, these are the questions that the Neuropsych Eval office has asked me to answer as part of the whole Psych Eval package that they are wanting to do to look into this dissociative stuff, as well as cognitive memory function and all that stuff. So, um, previous video, click right there, um, was about me doing, sorry, okay, what you need? I'm on a timer, what's up? I said it's after school. Okay, I'll talk to you later then. All right. Get them all out of here. Come on, dogs. I'm on a timer. Come on. Yes. Previous video, you saw me doing some retail therapy where I guess we needed to spoil ourselves a little bit and also try to get us in gear for setting up some routines and um, just a fun way of trying to get everybody on the same page. So we bought a lot of stuff. It's a fun little video that we did. Um, the previous video before that was our attempt at talking about um, eight through 12 or whatever. And we did not get to it because we had a little bit of a meltdown with some of our littles because we went and got our blood drawn for the labs, completely unrelated to the topic at hand. And the video right before that was <sighs> answers to the question, depression, Beck depression inventory, um, numbers one through seven. And it triggered us really badly. And we were having a lot of, you know, heaviness in our eyeballs and, and chaos in the mind. And we just needed to meditate and that seemed to help. However, we get to working. We started working at nine o'clock and about 10 30, we just couldn't cut it anymore. And we called in sick for the rest of the day because we knew that we needed to finish these questions today. And we have a 6 PM appointment with our therapist tonight. So we wanted that time to go get our labs done. That was already on the plan to do that during lunch. We wanted a chance to get in touch with our littles and get in touch with the other noodles and try to understand um, what's coming up for us when we're answering these questions because a lot of our, a lot of these noodles um, are depressed and we've got some comorbidity. Co 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 I'm saying that right? Comorbidity. Co I'm just going to put the word right there. You guys figure out how to say that. Comorbidity. Comorbidity. You have some other symptoms going on besides DID. You probably it's it's, it's common. It's typical. Whether it be anxiety or depression or I, I can't even think of anything else right now. Maybe you've got aches and pains. Maybe you've got pain bodies. Maybe you've got flashbacks or or you know, something, I don't know what you got, but we have depression in some of our noodles. Some of them are noodles don't. Um, some of our noodles are feeling great and feeling hopeful for the future and don't have a lot of these symptoms. So we have a hard time answering these questions, which is why we are struggling today. But I do want to finish up the questions and journal it just for ourselves mainly, because we do review our own videos to make sure everybody in the headspace is on the same page since we probably won't remember what we were saying. Not all of us will remember later. So the question says, please circle the appropriate response considering your emotions for the past two weeks. You don't need to be like that. All right, so question number eight. It asks, I don't feel disappointed in myself or I am disappointed in myself or I am disgusted with myself. Oh, this is, this is number seven. I'll try this again. Okay, so starting with number eight and we'll work our way to number 21 as quickly as possible. As soon as my dog goes out there. Starting with number eight, I have to answer one of these four. I either have to say, I don't feel any worse than anybody else, or I have to say, I am critical of myself for my weaknesses or mistakes, or I have to say, I blame myself all the time for my faults, or I have to say, I blame myself for everything bad that happens. And here is what we've decided to say. We said, I do feel worse than anyone else, blue, till, maroon, and peach. That's who, that's who feels that. I also feel better than anyone else. That's gold, yellow, green, and orange. And the first four are critical of ourselves. We blame ourselves for our faults and everything bad that happens to us. So you can take a guess on which ones are feeling depressed, right? The next one is I do, don't have any thoughts of killing myself. I have thoughts of killing myself, but I would not carry them out. I would like to kill myself. I would kill myself if I had the chance. You can see why this was having an issue with us today. All right, here's what we wrote. We wrote, some of us have many thoughts about killing ourselves, but Peach Noodle makes sure that we don't. 
Have you ever seen the movie What Dreams May Come with Robin Williams? Isn't that ironic? Yes. We would do that if our own kids and husband died too. No doubt. So I do have suicidal ideology. I do. All of us do. All of us in the, in the system does. We do to some extent. To some extent. We even think Peach Noodle has it. It is that horrific. It's like I've talked about before. Maybe I didn't. I can't remember anymore. The black and white noodle is like a worm, a, a worm on a noodle. I think I've talked about this before. This sounds familiar. Uh, it's like a, it's like a brain noodle, like a earworm, like a song getting stuck in your head and you can't get the noodle out of your head. And it, and it infects all of the noodles. It infects it so badly that we become um, paralyzed and unable to cope and process even the not depressed ones. It takes, it's like, it's like, it's like a knight in shining armor sinking in uh, quicksand. They're still brave. They're still gallant. They're still awesome and amazing. Unfortunately, the quicksand grabs them. And so they're fighting off the black and white noodle, but it's usually peach noodle that can talk us out of it. And that's why we don't do anything is because peach noodle, she's got some abandonment issues and she would never, ever, ever want those abandonment issues on her own children. So she makes sure that we don't do that, but she has thought about it. And she's thought about the kids being better off with her without her and stuff like that. And that's just horrific. Nobody wants to think like that. And we certainly don't, which is what has pushed us to fight so hard at figuring ourselves out. That black and white noodle may have been a nuisance of a earworm, so to speak, but at the end of the day, we really appreciate him because we would have been lost and confused aside anyway. The black and white noodle scoops in collectively saving us from ourselves to think about that for a second and we go heck no we're gonna change we're gonna get help we're gonna journal we're gonna dance we're gonna sing we're gonna write poetry we're gonna color we're gonna move into this bedroom we're gonna do something else with our lives we're not going to let black and white noodle take us but the other was taking us the other was taking us so far, far away from ourselves that the black and white noodle helped us snap out of it kind of like a high school coach does in ninth grade pushes you rides you hard makes you hate him makes you wish that you were never born type of thing and then at in your varsity year or your senior year and your coach is knocking you in the shoulder and patting you on the back and you're like, thanks coach, you were an asshole to me, but I really appreciate you riding me hard. I'm supposed to be off of work, so you can imagine my surprise when my phone started ringing for work. I thought I logged out. <laughs> um, yeah, so like the coach that rides you hard, you really do appreciate him at the end of the journey because you recognize that he was just trying to push you to be your best. And that's what we see Black and White Noodle has done for us, even though it was such a dark time and we're, we're, we're really conflicted on how we feel about that. But <sighs> where was I? Okay, that was number nine. Wow. The next one is, I don't cry any more than usual. I cry more now than I used to. I cry all the time now. Or I used to be able to cry, but now I can't cry even though I want to. So then I had to write what all the noodles were thinking and we counted them up and we tallied. And we basically figured out that 13 of them don't cry, but four of them do. And those four cry more than usual. Those are cyan, mint, maroon, and peach. Those four cry more than usual because of lime noodle, red noodle, green noodle, teal noodle, black and white noodle, did I say that already? Maroon noodle and the outside world. Yes, that's right. Maroon noodle cries because of other noodles, but maroon noodle also makes one of the other three noodles cry. Maroon, maroon's a, maroon's a basket case. She's got her own issues. Anyways, um, because of the complexity of the crying and who cries and what cries and what makes them cry. And I said the outside world because the triggers of the outside world definitely do stimulate these noodles to make others cry within us. And crying is not a telltale sign of depression, right? I mean, there's other reasons why people cry, but the crying more than usual part, that is what, that's why they're asking that question. All right, number 11, I am no more irritated by things than I ever was, or I am slightly more irritated than usual, or I am quite annoyed or irritated a good deal of the time, or I feel irritated all of the time. Well, you can only imagine that I can't answer just one of these when I'm trying to honor every single noodle in my head. Red is always irritated. Green is slightly irritated. Maroon is annoyed sometimes. Yellow is irritated with us. Lime is always irritated. Magenta is always pissed. She wanted me to write that word down. Not irritated. Oh, so then she says, okay, this is what the other ones say. Not irritated is peach, orange, gold, yellow, mint, teal, cyan, indigo, purple, and pink. So if we have this many noodles that are not irritated, but this many that are, which one do you go with? How do you answer this question? Exactly. That's why we need to take this test for all of our noodles, or at least uh, uh, the majority of our noodles. We need to do it more than once is how I'm guessing. <sighs> all right. 
or I just have to pick the best answer that fits the whole of the system, which is super confusing, which is why I'm journaling about this because it is just so difficult for me to choose one answer. All right, next one is number 12. Number 12 says, I have not lost interest in other people. I am less interest in other people than I used to be, or I have lost most of my interest in other people, or I have lost all of my interest in other people. This is a big one because we're, we're in COVID. We're in isolation. We are in lockdown. We are in, what do you call it, quarantine. We struggled in the beginning of COVID, but now we kind of don't want to see anybody, mainly because we don't want to be false to anybody. We want to be ourselves. So here's what we wrote. We have lost all interest in other people unless they want to get to know us. And that is true. I don't really want to talk to anybody unless they want to get to know who I am. And most people are not open-minded to that. They, and I don't want to lie to them. So I'd rather not talk to people right now. That's pretty much how all of our noodles feel right now. They, they all are yearning for a friend. And when I was trying to do Zoom meetings and um, talk to people from Instagram or talk to people from YouTube and stuff like that, I noticed that nobody's really interested to get to know me. Everyone's in their own stuff, right? And so rather than seeking validation from a group of people who are also seeking validation, I really just need to learn how to validate myself. So that's what we're working on. We're not really interested in people. We're interested in validating ourselves. I need to stop repeating myself. Wow. Okay. Uh, next one says decisions. Alexa, stop. So I guess we are over our 17 minutes. I think I've edited some stuff out because I've been interrupted a couple times. Okay. The next part is about decisions. It says, I make decisions about as well as I ever could, or I put off making decisions more than I used to, or I have a greater difficulty in making decisions than I used to, or I can't make decisions at all anymore. And this says, I am terrible at making decisions. Most of us agree we can't make decisions at all unless we have found alignment. And I take just the most recent example is that shopping trip that we did earlier today. And we were really buying a lot of rainbow stuff that really just spoke to the majority of us. And we were able to make decisions based on it. And we had some noodles that were naysayers and, and no, don't spend the money and no, you don't need that. And we did put some items back, believe it or not. We did practice some self-control. We didn't buy everything we wanted, um, but we still were able to make some decisions. And, and mainly that was because we weren't being watched. If we were being watched by other people, whether it be by work or husband or kids or friends or family, we would have a harder time making decisions because our go-to what we used to do was we'd make decisions based on what other people wanted from us. And we have a hard time making decisions for ourselves when other people are around. We're practicing, but it's really hard. So yeah, we are terrible at making decisions because we're arguing a lot. And because we have that Kathy in retirement with the Batman signal. Did I tell you about that? Yeah, I think I did. Okay. I do feel, okay. It asks me about looks. 14. I don't feel that I look any worse than I used to, or I am worried that I am looking old or unattractive. Two, I feel like there are permanent changes in my appearance that make me look unattractive. Or four, I believe that I look ugly. I struggled with this one because I'm comfortable with my looks. I don't hate the way I look, but I definitely don't think I look pretty. I think I do look ugly. I'm comfortable with my ugly. So I don't like that this is used to determine if I'm depressed because if I'm comfortable with my level of ugly <laughs> does that mean I'm depressed so what I wrote here it says I do think I do feel we all think we're ugly I, I can dress up and I can put makeup on and whatnot but that doesn't feel like us it doesn't feel like me so I have a hard time dressing up and looking prettier um I think another noodle is disagreeing with me sorry I'm having a hard time hearing that one because okay I guess they want me to say something what like when we got our hair done the other day and it was styled for us and it looked really sleek and stuff like that, we did feel pretty. And when we bought a new outfit, we feel pretty. When we buy new shoes, we feel pretty. When we put on eyeliner and makeup and stuff, we do feel pretty. So we like that feeling of feeling pretty, but we we don't require it. Some people are addicted to that. Some people need that. Some people have to have that on the daily and we don't. All right, number 16. Is that 15? 15. I don't feel that I look any worse. Oh no, that's 14. Number 15. I can work about as well as before, or it takes an extra effort to get started at doing something, or I have to push myself very hard to do anything, or I can't do any work at all. Well, we wrote our work ability has suffered greatly in the past year. And I think that's because we're not fronting just one noodle all day long. We purposely have allowed the other noodles to come out. We aren't denying them anymore, especially in the last few months. So that one's a no brainer to me. 16. I can sleep as well as usual, or I don't sleep as well as I used to, or I wake up one to two hours earlier than usual and find it hard to go back to sleep, or I wake up several hours earlier than I used to and cannot go back to sleep. And then uh, we wrote, I'm not falling asleep quickly and sometimes wake up with night terrors, but it's I'm not waking up much earlier than before. And if I do, I can fall back asleep. 
So I really don't know how to answer that because my answer wasn't in those selections because I don't really know how each of those noodles have in their sleep patterns, but as a body, our answer is not here. They don't talk about falling asleep. Number 17, I don't get more tired than usual or I get more tired. I don't get more tired than usual, or I get tired more easily than I used to, or I get tired from doing almost anything, or I'm too tired to do anything. Do you notice me talking right now? Does it sound different than usual? Because I've got a, I've got a noodle that is doing the thinking, and I don't know who's talking. I just got a text message right now from my husband as I'm recording, and it says, it asks me if I went to work today, if I'm working today, probably because he could tell on the tracker app that I was at Michael's forever in a day. And now the till noodle is trying not to freak out, but kind of freaking out about not doing what husband expected us to do. And that's not fair because that's, we did not consider that today when we decided to take care of ourselves and we shouldn't have to worry about pleasing husband when we need to take care of ourselves. So this is a very interesting noodle that's coming up because this noodle was not around when we made some decisions for ourselves today. And if they were, they were fine with us going to Michael's, I thought. That's why we came into this bedroom is because we can't play by Till's rules anymore. Till's rules were codependent and living in fear, made us live in fear, made everything worse. So we need to stop living by Till's rules. I'm so tired. I'm already tired just reading these. So what did I, what was I talking about? Did I say something about appetite? I must have, right? Let's just say I did. Okay. So I wrote for appetite. My appetite fluctuates like everything else. So sometimes I'm extremely hungry. Sometimes I'm so full. Sometimes I'm so nervous and stomachs in my butterflies and I can't eat anything. And sometimes I got stomachs and butterflies and everything and I want to eat everything. I don't have a consistency with my eating and I'm not picking out on ice cream and cookies and candy and stuff. So that's not the reason why I'm obese. All right. Number 19. I haven't lost much weight, if any, lately, or I have lost more than five pounds, or I have lost more than 10 pounds, or I have lost more than 15 pounds. So that's interesting. It's only talking about losing weight. I did lose weight when I first moved into this bedroom a few months ago. And that seemed normal because I was highly stressed. But now I've seemed to have gained weight in the last few months. So that's what I wrote down. I've gained weight. I haven't lost anything. And then it says, uh, number 20, I am no worried. I am no more worried about my health than usual. I am more worried about physical problems like aches and pains, upset stomach or constipation. Um, or I am very worried about physical problems and it's hard to think of anything else. And, or I am so worried about physical problems that I cannot think of anything else. My answer that I put for number 20 is I am not that concerned about my health, except for once, which was like a week ago, two weeks ago, when I was just feeling achy all over and I thought I had COVID, but I don't seem to have that anymore. And I'm getting my blood drawn. So I feel like if there's anything I need to worry about, it'll be addressed at an upcoming appointment, but I'm not really worried about it at all. All right, number 21, this is the last one and then I'm gonna let y'all go. Okay, so it says, I have not noticed any recent changes in my interest in sex, or I am less interested in sex than I used to be, or I have almost no interest in sex, or I have lost interest in sex completely. I wrote down this answer, but I just realized it's wrong. I wrote down, I have lost interest in sex altogether, but that's not true, Pinky and, but that's not true, Pinky and Green Noodle are still interested in sex. The rest of them have no interest whatsoever. I would almost say that we are almost asexual if it wasn't for green and pinky. Um, all right, so those are my 21 questions from the Beck depression inventory. And I don't know how we're going to answer these for the doctor, but that's the answers that I have for all of us. And I don't know, I've, I'm waiting for his email return because I sent him an email asking what he thinks we should do. So I guess what we'll do is just, um, yeah, we'll wait to see what the next steps are and I'll keep you updated on the next vlog. Thanks so much for watching. Um, Till Noodle is freaking out in there. She wants to text him back right away, but we're telling her to wait till the video is done. And then we'll text him back and we will tell him that we took a sick day and he will just have to deal with it. Okay, okay, okay. Till Noodle's okay. We just need to text him. All right, so I'll talk to you later. Have a good day. Bye-bye.